Okay guys, so in this video we're checking out the Cadex Nebula camera. This is a camera sensor replacement unit for the uh, Vista camera. And it comes in two versions here this, with the camera only. And this is to come with the um, coaxial cable attached in the back here. I'll show you what it looks like inside in a second. But I just wanted to uh, show you the way to this without the uh, cable attached. I'll show you that in here in a second. But uh, it comes in two versions. It comes like this with the camera and the cable and then you have a complete unit with the uh, Vista transmitter as well uh, attached to it along with the um, uh, the antenna. So I have a Vista here in this dragon frog frame. You probably saw this video a few days ago with the rush antenna in the back and that's the transmitter here and then the camera was, well I pulled it off already, was attached here in the front and that's how it will come in those two different versions and you'll see links to those down in the description. But I've removed that camera from that frame, and this is what it looks like. This is basically the DJI uh, camera for the DJI FPV system, is what it was. And Cadex has developed a nano sized version, so it's uh, 14 millimeters nano size with a looks like an M8 lens, pretty big M8 lens actually. And it's supposed to be lighter, so no cables attached to either of these. I'm just going to show you basically what the weight difference is going to be between the two systems. So the old bigger camera is about 9.3 grams and then this one here, the new Nebula, is about 4.6 grams, so about half the weight. And here are some measurements because everyone will ask me what these are. So try and get across the where the mounting part is. 13.99. So if you measure across the PCB part here, it's a little bit wider, 14.38. And the case itself, here on the, this is up and down vertically, it's 13.95. There's a little back plastic piece here that covers the back where the cable connects. I'll show you that here in a second. But basically, uh, from the front of the glass all the way to the Back is 21.27, and from the center of the mounting hole to the front is about 12.64. And obviously, there's only one mounting hole here on this camera on the Nebula versus two on the old style DJI. But to get an, give you an idea of where that hole is relative to the front of the lens, which is what most people are going to want for mounting. See, so it does sit a little bit further back, by a few millimeters it looks like. So if you guys are wondering what frames they'll fit in, you may need to make some adjustments. Uh, or you might have parts of your frame showing up in your field of view. I don't know what the field of view is of this camera versus the old one. I'm going to, uh, when I put it into this frame here, I will find out because this one was a little bit recessed behind the um, front of this carbon here. So if we see the side plate showing up in this one, then this one might be a bit wider. Um, but let me go ahead and take this back off. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so just two screws, and then this is where the cable connects. Right here, looks like it goes, it goes like, like that, just snaps into place. And I've elected to just take this connector off of here, off the camera side. You can, obviously, if you do get it like this, with this connected already, you can connect it to the Vista area unit or the transmitter side if you want, but in, in, in my case it's easier to do it this way because otherwise I have to go dig out my whole build and get that out of there. So I'm just doing it this way. So that's what the uh, back of the board looks like. And then obviously with these screws removed, you can see what the sensor looks like and the, the lens. Okay, so a little hard to get the camera to focus. Here's what the sensor looks like. It's uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same sensor, just in a smaller package here. It's a 4.3 sensor, just like before. Okay, here's just a look at the lens. It doesn't look like anything particularly special. It just looks pretty big, and this looks like it has a pretty big aperture. So we'll have to see what that image looks like. It's going to obviously look different than the original DJI camera. So get this in the frame, and let's go see what this looks like. Okay, so I got the uh, camera installed, and you can see it's further back, as I expected, than the standard DJI camera. 
So, I um, plugged it in and everything, I looked at the image, and it is showing a bit of the side plate on the left and the right. Just a tiny bit. Um, field of view is supposed to be, it was advertised, supposed to be the same, 150 degrees. Field of view on both cameras, and it looks about the same, just anecdotally if I'm just looking at it from uh, images inside my house. So we'll have to see how it looks like in flight, but with the side plate being kind of blocked, it is going to sort of distort that field of view a little bit. But you get an idea of what that looks like in terms of like distortion and everything compared to the uh, rig of the camera. Um, yeah, I don't have, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do a side by side because I don't think I can fly both the air unit and both air units at the same time. So I will try and put, um, do two quads, uh, two separate quads. Mm, I can't do that either. don't have two goggles to record, so yeah. Sorry, no side by side. I don't have enough equipment to do a side by side properly, so X that idea. Now, um, in terms of the camera and the cable that's included, if you get the um, cable that's included, that's a little bit more extra price. It's like uh, $45. And if you get the one without the cable attached, or um, so no cable, basically camera only, I think that's coming in at $37, $36.99. And of course the full size, uh, everything, camera, cable, plus the transmitter and the, and the antenna is $125, $126. So. I'll link all that stuff down in the description, and here is the flight footage for you.